Hey, welcome to the Citizen Mike Show. Thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. My name is Mike Berninski, and somewhere on that split screen, I think up there, is Republican Town Councilor Christina Tata. Uh, Christina, um, thanks for coming back on the show. But, you know, there was some breaking news, I think, last night, which would be Wednesday, uh, June 9. Um, I hear the mayor announced his intentions with respect to the coming municipal elections. Yes, yes. What happened? Um, Walk us through it. Uh, mayor Dickinson announced at Republican Town Committee that he will be uh, seeking re-election for mayor. Yeah. Was there um, like a, a rousing speech or was this very low key? Uh, how, did it, how did it go? Yep. Uh, similar to in, in years past, he had a um, kind of had some props and a, a costume and he um, he talked about using tools and uh, had the tools and talked about uh, how we need to work to make the town, keep the town going. And uh, so, yep, s similar to previous years. So it was a pretty exciting, exciting announcement. So that, so there was sort of a, a little theater with his announcement. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll just um, talk about uh, the, the, uh, the under ticket a, a little bit. Um, the, uh, the council on the Republican side, the council seats, in my opinion, are, um, I think, pretty well established. We've talked about uh, Autumn Allenson is probably going to take over Chris Shortell's seat, who is not seeking re-election. Nothing is over till it's over. I get all that disclaimer and words of caution, you know, something can happen in the last minute, but that seems to be um, what's going on. Whereas um, on the Democratic side, I, I think um, things are much more uh, in question. So we're going to wait on the Democratic side. Uh, until after July or, or something. Um, but with a mayor running, um, it's my opinion that Vinny Testa will not run for mayor and will not challenge Mayor Dickinson. And there's two other mayoral candidates that Democrats have. They're going to have to sort that out in their June meeting or July meeting. So that's where we are. Um, let's move over to data centers. Um, that seems to be um, funding the record journals. <laughs> Uh, activities, all those, all those stories. You were at the meeting on um, on June eighth, and I, and I know because it was remote, you can't always, you can't look at the mayor at his facial expression, and and you know, you're sort of handicapped to get those sort of reactions. But when I, uh, I think it was Joe Marone, um, asked the mayor about where he stood on this huge, potentially huge project for data centers, it seemed like the mayor was a little restrained. Uh, he wasn't jumping for joy. What was your impression? Um, what did he say? What was your, how'd you, how'd you take that? Yeah, I agree. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't hundred percent sure where the, where the mayor stood on this um, going into the meeting. Obviously, you know, the administration has been working on it for some time, um, but it was, it's fairly new to the council. So um, I hadn't really had a chance to, to speak to anyone until, you know, until it was on the agenda. Uh, if I, if I had to kind of guess what I think the mayor is, is thinking, he seemed to me like he's probably in favor of this, um, but there were some loose ends. There are some things that I think he's concerned about um, that they're trying to, to tie up before a final decision is made. Um, I think he's concerned about the noise, the potential noise issue, because they seem like, um, the law department and the agreement is really focusing on that. They hired the sound consultant. So I think he wants to be sure that that won't be an issue. Um, and I think they're concerned about the roads. So getting, getting through the residential areas. So um, yeah. um, we're going to talk about um, the roads when we have some maps up, which I'm going to try to put up um, momentarily. Uh, just to back up a little bit, I think most everyone watching this show knows what we're talking about with data centers, but it's worth 90 seconds, I guess, to sort of review where we are. Um, so earlier this year, because of new legislation, um, data centers were invited into the state of Connecticut largely tax-free, um, sales tax, uh, you know, all kinds of taxes, but including local property taxes. But they have to negotiate a host fee agreement in lieu of taxes in order to come into a municipality. Um, and that's the step we're in now. I think the negotiations on the host fee agreement have, have been ongoing. 
Data centers are big, boxy buildings loaded with uh, sophisticated computer gear. Um, the atmosphere needs to be chilled, um, or, or just the way the computer systems work. You got to have it air conditioned. Uh, data centers have had a reputation for being a little bit noisy, but I think if the developer of this project was, you know, with us, he he would probably say that's the old-fashioned data centers. We we have learned how to manage it. I I'm not sure that's what he'd say, but I think that's that's what he'd say. Um, and uh, so that's where we are. Um, you have been through two meetings now where data centers were discussed in public, untold number of executive sessions, probably 30 or 40 of them, I think. Um, where do you, what's your impression uh, on data centers? Where, where are you leaning and why before we get those maps done? Sure. Um, well, there weren't there weren't that many executive sessions. I think I only recall one, maybe two. But uh, my my general feeling on on this now that we've you know gone through a few meetings and we're getting more information, I think it's a I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good option for Wallingford um, for a few reasons. One, I think this is kind of what we're going to get. So they're putting them in industrial zones. And the things that previously may have been in industrial zones like manufacturing um, that just doesn't really exist around here anymore um, you know suburban office space is not happening anymore so we did well with that for maybe 30 years and that's kind of a thing of the past now so what we're looking at getting now are warehouses basically and we see you know a lot of those coming and People tend to not like those because they say there's a lot of trucks, there's 24 hour traffic, uh, there could be runoff from the trucks. So this doesn't really have any of those. It's, it's a big building and there's not a lot of traffic. There's not a lot of coming and going. Um, so well, I think it's a good option, but hmm. we have to make sure we do it right um, before we just, you know. What more do you want? What are you looking for before you're confident in a yes vote? I think a lot of my answers were questions, uh, all my questions were answered um, on Tuesday, but what I was looking for, my uh, the two, two kind of concerns I have. One, I wanna make sure that we're not giving away the farm, like, literally. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of tax abatements. I said that at the meeting, I've said it prior meetings. Um, I, I don't like the concept of them because I feel like some people have been here for years doing business in town and they're not getting a break. So why are we giving a break to someone else? Um, that being said, the state of Connecticut kind of created this. And if financially this is a good thing for the town and any other options without a tax break aren't going to make us as much money as this would, then, then I'd be okay with it. So we did throw up some numbers and uh, it seems like financial financially speaking, this this could be a, a positive, um, even with the tax abatement. So that was my first uh, concern. Yep. And my second concern is just where they're all going to go. Um, there are a few residents that are concerned uh, that live next to the industrial area and they're, they're concerned about the proximity. And I think a lot of that is going to depend on planning and zoning. Okay. Um, so the, um, the data centers are primarily in the area of, uh, in back of the Hilton Garden Inn, in back of um, the motel on uh, near Route 68 and Route 91, um, Marriott Courtyard, uh, the Wall Farm, the Rubisky Farm in, in that area. Um, that seems to be, you know, a good a good area because there's a lot of space and um, the distances between the data centers and most houses is uh, very far off. Yeah, let's see if we can get a uh, screen share up to get some maps. Um, bear with me here. Um, so this is a rendition. It's it's not really a survey surveyor's map or anything else. It's just a sort of an artist rendition as to what it might look like. Um, the developer likes to say it's conceptual here in that, uh, that North Farms area, right up next to the Meriden, the Meriden border. So I'm gonna try to wiggle my cursor around a little bit uh, to draw attention to what's, um, what's on, the, what's on the, um, the artist's rendition. And uh, this is North Farms Road coming down 
coming down here. And it, you can see that the data centers have a sort of a sweeping arc kind of a, a shape to them. And the yellow boxes are the possible locations for the, uh, for the data center. Um, one of the concerns of the, of the neighbors is I think this road, I think that that represents a new road that they would create to get access to, to their properties. Um, and some of the neighbors had concerns about that, uh, had concerns about that. Christina, what was the concern about this road, if I have it right? And what's, what's the answer? I believe the concern was uh, traffic and um, I think a little bit of just kind of fear of the unknown. Um, you know, these people have lived with farms in their, in their backyard. And now, you know, this is, this is kind of a big change. Uh, the, the answer I believe was that they are going to try to not have traffic going from that road. There's going to be a different main entrance. Um, and that would be down this way off of Barnes Industrial, Sterling Drive, Tower Drive. Is that how you understand? Yes, that's how I understood it. And so the emergency entry, I believe they said would really wouldn't be used that often. Okay. So there was a hang up on, on Tuesday night. There, there was a hang up. And um, the Corporation Council, um, I think, understood her mission uh, to keep traffic um, related to the data centers that would be employees, deliveries, visitors, things like that, off North Farms and to make them come around um, the bottom here off of Sterling and off of Barnes. But the God Space team said, but wait a minute. If we don't get Whitland's approval for a road that goes in, and I'm trying to wiggle the cursor around, uh, if we don't get Wetlands approval for a new road, we can't get to our property. And the Corporation Council, the law department seem to be hanging tough. And um, understandably, uh, Attorney Lanthazano representing Godspace dug in his, his heels too. Is this at an impasse? I don't think so. I. I think they've come too far to let that be the the thing that stops this. So I'm hopeful that the uh, law department and uh, and Godspace can can figure something out. But I yeah okay. Uh, they they uh, need they need to. The problem is they they want the host agreement first before they go to inland wetlands. And so if this is contingent upon that, I'm not sure how they go to inland wetlands before they have the agreement. So that's. I think that's where they are. So when I when I heard this um, debate, I said this is this is sort of easy. I, I don't know why it was so complicated that the contract could say that Gotspace, the developers of the data centers, that um, could use their best efforts to get inland wetlands approval, uh, and if they get it, problem solved. They can use these this access way, and if they don't get it, well, they can use the new road. I mean, uh, it just seems so. It seems so obvious to me. Uh, and Jana Small, Corporation Council, was looking to the uh, the Corporation Council was looking to the Town Council for guidance, and she wanted to know, you know, hey guys, how how hard and firm are you about keeping traffic off of North Farms Road? So there's another map that uh, I want to put up. It shows another uh, shows another location, and just see what you think about that location. So this is the. One of the other properties that they're talking about um, developing, and um, this is basically the wall farm. Um, and the cursor, for those that live on that side of town, this is that school bus depot over here. And the Marriott Court Yard is down here. And so they would, are showing one, two, three uh, buildings with a, with a power substation, it doesn't seem like there's houses around there that it should be a concern. I'm just wondering, well, this seems like a, a less complicated problem. Why, why can't we just say this is okay and, and maybe not even talk about North Farms? I, I don't know, what are, your, what are your thoughts? Am I off base here? No, I agree. I, I From what I'm hearing and 
what was said in the meeting, I don't think, I don't know that anyone really would have an issue with, I mean, maybe somebody might have an issue with the whole concept, but this yeah. location, I don't think there's any problem with. Uh, okay. But I'm also not sure that they will agree to just one location. It, it could be all or none for them. I want to talk about um, the meeting on Tuesday night. I put together, well, I reduced like three hours and 20 minutes of conversation into about six minutes and 20 seconds. So obviously there's a lot of editorial judgment as to what I included in this clip um, and what actually went on. But hey, you know, six minutes is kind of a long, a long clip for the Citizen Mike show, but it, it kind of does give a, um, well, a flavor uh, of the atmosphere in the room. But let me, let me tell you what you're going to hear before you hear it for yourself. I made a little list of some of the topics they cover, and this is a collage of clips all, all put together. And we open up with uh, Attorney Len Fizano representing Godspace, pressing the council for quick action. Um, and he seemed to um, create almost an emergency situation. I don't know, it, it didn't sit well with some of the counselors. I mean, you guys have been living with this for only three weeks and they're saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There's no time to, uh, no time to waste, which, you know, if you're in this kind of business, you kind of have some respect for the democratic process, which is slow and sloppy. And, uh, it, you know, you, you just it's not like the private sector where you can get a decision the next weekend. Um, there was also a comment about if we don't move quickly, uh, the available power off the grid uh, may shrink or something and and undermine the um, concept in another segment. Um, Tom Quinn, who was a co-owner of Godspace, describes the construction uh, process uh, and with particular focus on the North Farms area. Uh, he mentions uh, Tankwood Road as, as maybe being the most uh, impact. He said something which I think is controversial and um, I, I did not take it at face value, but maybe others uh, did. And that was that the, the noise standards that Wallingford had put into its draft agreement were the most aggressive in the country. Um, I think research has to back that up. I, I, I just didn't take that at, at, at face value. Then Janice Small weighs in and says, you know, watch out, this noise is a, uh, is a real problem. And then uh, we have Republican town councilor Christina Tata uh, mentioning that hey, we're just getting information in dribs and drabs and at the last minute, and this isn't how we should, this isn't how we should be doing things. And then finally, it ends with um, the, the co-owner of Godspace kind of a promising a gift to the Wallingford Land Trust, a gift of land, because the Wallingford Land Trust has property that abuts the data center uh, property. So that's what you're going to see. Three, two, one. Let's roll it. That we are concerned over timing. I just want to be clear. Um, and I want to be honest about it. Uh, as I mentioned, this project has begun in March. We're now into June. Um, there are people who are interested who uh, Tom has been talking to at great lengths for many months uh, who actually want to come visit Wallingford, but there's nothing for them to sink their teeth to. In, in other words, to say, this is going to happen. Uh, the other thing is that there's only so much megawatt left on our grid there are other towns that have this plan out there and have adopted them adopted these types of hosting agreements not as detailed as this one uh, but they've adopted hosting agreements they've already started to entice people and if that grid has a limited amount that we could take for everyone who signs up in another town our possibility of getting somebody decreases uh, to the extent that they take that power away so I think that timing is an issue. There are other uh, contracts out there that need to be cemented uh, in a time fashion. So we, we would ask respectfully uh, for uh, an approval tonight. You're going to hear construction, just like you did with the Amazon building in North Haven and all of the other large buildings that have been built. It's about five months or roughly of uh, site work. It is about five to six months of foundation and conduit and raised floor work to get the foundation in. And then the balance is the tilt up concrete walls that come there. They fit up the glass and that stuff out in the front of the building toward the end of the process. So there will be noise, there'll be excavation noise. But I think if you draw your attention to the map that was shown, um, there's one or two uh, buildings that would. Uh, 
and they may or may not be built together as one. We don't know that yet. They could be uh, divided up and there could be a third there. But uh, those buildings uh, that are closest to Tankwood uh, would probably um, be the most intrusive for sound for construction. However, the ones that are in the back and the ones that are more central in the project, um, they're thousands of feet the backside and uh, at least a thousand or fifteen hundred feet i don't have the measurement in front of me jim can give it to us so uh, i would say that would be really minimal impact I mean, yes there will be a period of time for noise to be able to build these and then it will be very quiet in fact the people that i'm talking to consider what wallingford proposed is probably the most aggressive noise uh ordinance if it, we call it that now or requirement in the country Ten decibel increase is a doubling of the sound these are these are real numbers it's a real concern and that is why you know we view that the um noise ordinance would not be sufficient to deal with this with the being this close to residential and that's why this protocol was established we believe that that the maximum number of buildings based on the utility that may or may not be available will be to be between maximum now would be five to six, but we really believe that we'll cap at four to four and a half, and there would be a half in there. So that on that one site, that would generate about six million dollars a year. We haven't talked about this, but all of our contracts in other towns include final mile pricing for the electric. The electric benefit to the town, the actual profit for the final mile, is actually more than the host fee agreement the way this works. So there's another layer here no one's discussed. But I have a hard time voting on this tonight because I don't think what we have is the finished product. Um, Attorney Small said before, um, I believe her, her words were, some things in the agreement need cleanup. Uh, the mayor mentioned that there was something that is a stumbling block. Um, so I, I don't, it's hard for me to vote on an agreement when I don't think this is the final agreement. So we've had things trickling in all week, which is not, with something this big, it's not the, the best for us. Um, typically we get our agendas on a Wednesday for the, the following Tuesday and we can kind of plan and budget our time and make sure we have the time to read through everything and ask questions. And with this, things kind of kept trickling in. Um, we just got some revised maps at 3.30 this afternoon. Regarding sound, it doesn't get blown into the conservation area or blown toward the houses. If you Google this and find it, you'll find out that sound, and if you worked on a data center, one of the newer ones you might know, that the sound is sent vertically. And it's done that on the parapet roof through certain structures that are designed by the sound engineers to channel it vertically. It doesn't go out in any direction and it wouldn't be able to get out in any direction because there's an existing parapet wall on top of each one of these buildings now, which has generator venting and air conditioning. So it's a vertical structure within the parapet wall that doesn't exceed the height of the parapet wall. That's a deflection device. It works very well. They have them. I'm sure we're going to have to use them throughout Wallingford and uh, We'll be talking because uh, we haven't worked in a town yet where we haven't donated land. So, and we have uh, something interesting uh, that we are not gonna be able to use due to setbacks. So at some point as we go forward, when we get to the planning stage, uh, I'll be speaking to you about uh, our intentions there. So uh, we do have a plan for it. We've been in this business a long time and we know that these things are important. Okay. so. And that's what happened at the council meeting, at least six minutes and 20 some odd seconds uh, of it. Um, I, wanted to, I want to talk a bit about the noise issue because that also seems to be uh, a hang up here. And it certainly is an issue in the North Farms area. And I think uh, in, in watching the council meeting, some councilors didn't quite understand what was in the contract. They confused the proposed agreement with our consultants report and they're totally different. You can take our consultant's report and crinkle it up and throw it away because it's not part of the contract language. And, and so we got to see, and we're going to do this now, whether or not the contract language offers real protection or not. And that's not a criticism of the agreement. Maybe it's the best we can do. I don't know. 
But I think there are some expectations that uh, the agreement puts a cap on noise, but that's not, that's not what's going on. Um, here's, what the, here's what the agreement says. And, and the town has basically two levers, two areas to exert influence over, over noise. Let me read this to you. If it gets confusing, I'll read it again. You let me know. So the owner's consultant, not us, not us, got space, their consultant shall complete the noise monitoring per a protocol which Gotspace itself develops. You know, okay. It's going to analyze the data and create, here comes the magic word, design goals. I don't know what a design goal is, but Christina, I know you know what a design goal is. How, how would I know a design goal if it hit me in the face? I mean, is it a design goal? We're going to do the best we can. And if it doesn't meet your satisfaction too bad, it's the goal. I mean, I, you know, it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Um, so they're going to create design goals to achieve a standard which is acceptable to the town of Wallingford as, as advised by their consultants. So the town of Wallingford is not the mayor, not the council, not planning and zoning. This contract says it's the consultant is, is, uh, is going to be looking at a standard and a standard of what? I mean, it's a little unclear as to what standard they're, they're talking about. So I'm uncomfortable that this is so loose as it is, but let's go to the second lever of influence. And it says the owner's consultant, not us, not us, the owner's consultant shall prepare a report describing the limits, design goals, noise and vibration control concepts. So a noise and vibration control concept, and maybe that's gonna be, I don't know, we're gonna do the best we can. I mean, I'm not sure what that concept is and um, what form it takes. The concept could be very disappointing. Um, and that's to um, the concepts to be implemented in the design facility. If approved by the town, uh, this, this concept, this report, in consultation with its consultants, then the owner works with its noise consultant to finish the job. So for those that think, no, noise are gonna be limited, we'll have a say in how much noise, not what the agreement says. And that's, that's a little troubling. Now, again, these guys are putting in hundreds of millions of dollars, will continue to do so. And I think an argument can be made, they need a little, a little wiggle room and, and maybe this is okay, as long as we know the risks, as long as there's no misunderstanding about the protections Wallingford has and doesn't have. And that's really my point, not to trash the agreement, but to be a reality check for those who say our agreement protects us from noise. And I'm saying, well, not really, as long as you know that, uh, but you want to go ahead anyway, fair point. Now, what happens, I ask, if they break their noise standards or conceptual, you know, if they don't do what their consultant says they should do? Here's what happens. The owner's consultant, not the town, the owner's consultant shall make recommendations for corrective work, including the time frame for the corrective work and they're going to give that to the town for their consultants review and comment, not approval. So if they run into a noise problem, the consultant says to the owner, the owner's consultant says to the owner, you got a problem. You're not meeting your own standards and it'll take 10 years to fix it. And the owner's consultant puts that in a report, gives it to the town for comment. And the, and the town says too long, but there's no leverage as to what can be done about it. That's what bothers me. Um, any thoughts on my thoughts? Yeah, I, I understand your concern. I think we're all concerned about that. And I think that uh, attorney small is also concerned about that. And so I'm hoping that uh, one of the reasons I think we wanted to not vote on it on Tuesday was so that they can maybe tighten that up a bit. Um, because I, it seems to me attorney small, that's, that seems to be her biggest concern from what I can tell. So yeah. I'm hoping that by the next like I said, we, I don't think this agreement was the final product and that's why we were uncomfortable voting on it. At least that's why I was uncomfortable voting on it. Um, so I think those things that came up and since there is that concern about the noise, I'm hoping that by the next one, 
there's more specificity in regards to the noise issue. Yeah, more teeth. Mm -hmm. um, if if we can negotiate that in, let's change the subject. We talked about data centers too long in Susan Mike show. I think two shows maybe or three shows. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Let's talk about something bigger, better, more exciting, and that is the town is looking for an economic development marketing specialist. And um, I say, well, wait a minute, we got Tim Ryan. He's a secret weapon, right? I mean, I, what, are they, are they pushing Tim Ryan out the door? Well, I don't know about that. You guys will have to talk to Tim and see what his plans are. But they are advertising for an economic development marketing specialist. And there's an emphasis on, um, on digital marketing. And um, they're going to pay $22 an hour for 19 and a half hours. And I don't know. I mean, it seems a little light to me. It seems like it's not a career path. It seems like it's maybe your first or second job out of college, or maybe it's someone who retired and only wants to work part time. Um, and I don't know what a, a marketing specialist would do for 19 and a half hours that Tim Ryan doesn't already do. I don't, I don't know. But he, I'm not expecting you to answer that. I just bring these things up, you know. <laughs> what I think, and I, you know, I haven't really spoken to anybody about this. Um, if I had to guess, yeah. I know that I know that Mr. Ryan had kind of wanted to retire or semi-retire, and um, and then COVID hit, and um, he he had said he didn't feel like that was a good time to to leave, and I, I think we're all grateful for that because he really. He was working with the businesses during that time. So if I had to guess, I'm thinking this may be a way to kind of ease, maybe ease somebody in um, as Mr. Ryan decides if, you know, if he wants to retire or semi-retire and the focus on digital may just be to ensure that that, that person has the ability because um, we did have a presentation from a, a marketing team at Quinnipiac uh, who the EDC used to kind of uh, let us know where our, our digital marketing could uh, be improved. So if I had to guess, I think I think that's what it is. I don't think it's going to be somebody sitting there, you know, doing Facebook posts all day. I don't think that's, yeah. okay. that's what it is, but that's just my guess. Yeah, um, maybe next time. Uh, budget season comes around someone could uh, you know bring that uh, that could that, that consultant the 19 and a half hour consultant in front of the council and find, figure out what their duties are um i i also think there's a big difference between advertising and marketing and uh, their different skills um and the the group that uh came in front of the council to talk about the website i i thought they were doing more advertising sort of uh, than they were marketing um, the distinction between marketing and advertising is kind of subtle, and I'm, I'm not sure if I can express it the way a professor of marketing might do it, but I look at marketing as someone who filters out those who are not interested in you from those who are interested in you or potentially is interested in you, that a marketer would try to discern what magic words would appeal to a broader, to, to a segment of a broader population. Uh, whereas advertising, I think, takes the marketer's plan and buys advertising space or tinkers with the website. Um, so, uh, you know, great, great. We have a, you know, somebody to take Tim Ryan's spot, but um, I'd like to find out more about it. Anyway, you got the final word on anything you want. <laughs> anything I want. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, it's my, <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you know here. Um, I, I did um, tell the Republican Town Committee uh, at our last month's meeting that I will be um, seeking their endorsement and seeking re-election for my second term. So um, hopefully that goes well because I've only had, I think, three meetings in council chambers since I was elected. So I'd love to love to have a few uh, yeah. real meetings so, as opposed to on this computer screen, but. So you didn't know I was gonna ask you that question. And usually, um, you know, I give you fair warning as to where I'm going, <laughs> I, but, I didn't, I, but I didn't this time. And now I'm on a roll. And so we're gonna surprise oh, you sure. even, even more. <laughs> okay. So um, as you look back over the last two years or almost um, uh, two years, was it, what is it about being on the council that uh, drives you or leads you to doing it again? And maybe after that, doing it again. Uh, <laughs> is it the five hour meetings? No, no. Uh, 
Um, I really, I think my, the thing I, I probably felt like I had the most impact on was uh, the two budgets. Um, I really pushed my first year and um, for a zero, for a flat tax, 0% increase. Um, and, you know, by working with, with everyone and a lot of compromise and uh, kind of creativity, uh, we were able to do that. So that was, that was big. And then this year, again, I think well, there's another difficult budget season, but we were able to, um, you know, lower the mill rate uh, a little bit more. And that was, um, I mean, I, I hate to, <laughs> I hate to sound braggish or anything, but that was my motion that, that eventually ended up um, passing. So I was very happy with that, um, especially during COVID to be able to, to kind of help, you know, the people save some money I thought was, was good. And so I'd like to kind of keep, keep doing that. And uh, it's been nice to talk to people, you know, we do get, at least I've been getting a lot, you know, I get correspondence from people a lot and they're asking for uh, specific things and, you know, they say all politics is local and it's really proven to be that. So uh, it's been nice to try to, you know, help out people with, with issues they're having. And Right. So um, do you have any campaign promises, you know, as you, as you look forward to maybe getting re reelected? It looks like you're gonna, I mean, I hope. <laughs> But um, is there something on your on your list, your checklist that you're going to push for? I don't think a specific project, but I know you know my first my first election. I said um, you know fiscal responsibility and to try to keep the mill rate low while maintaining services, and I would keep doing that. I think I've done that. Okay. Um, I had a little tagline: results, not rhetoric. And I'm I'm very focused on that. I don't like a lot of. Uh, talk with nothing happening so i'm very focused on results so uh results, <laughs> in a broad sense rhetoric yeah whoa results not see that is is that marketing or is that advertising that's <laughs> advertising <laughs> that let's right? make um let's make that the final word thanks for coming on the show we will see you next time we pick up this might very well be the last um show of the, of the season i'm not sure but we'll look forward to seeing the next time around thanks again and thank, thank you. you viewers for watching the citizen mike show WPAA puts it up on uh, on their channel five times a week, uh, at, usually at nine o'clock. So we often say it's if it's nine at night, it's, it's night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Christina.